we're going to be creating a drawing using different types of value techniques. Um, so I'm going to be using pencil um, and then we'll go over using Sharpie and <clears throat> maybe color pencil, a few other types of uh, media. But for now, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do something simple. A, so I'm gonna do some sort of flower. I'm going to go ahead and use um, scumbling for the center. So it's kind of just like a controlled scribble. And I'm going to just start pressing lighter and doing larger shapes as I come to the center. So notice how the outside is a little bit darker. I'm gonna go over it one more time. Beep, beep. And slowly. Okay. Uh, to so show the uh, separation between the petals, I'm gonna go ahead and do some hatching. So I'm gonna choose which petals, let's see here, I want to be overlapping. I might even add some more in the back just so you guys can see it a little. See some more examples of it. Okay. All right. So here we go. So let's start with the back ones because these are gonna be the darkest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just making my hash marks very close together. I might even add some cross hatching in the areas that I want to be even darker. Okay, so that compared to something like this, maybe I just want to have a couple little wrinkles or folds in it. <clears throat> so maybe I would just add just a few hash marks, or hatch marks, sorry, just to give it texture. Um, and maybe I just want to do a little more here to show maybe there's a shadow being cast from this to there. Okay, so same thing here. A little bit of cross hatching. So you can kind of see the difference, right? So now we have nice contrast between these front petals and the back petals. So I did closer together cross-hatching lines, and then I did more spread out, <clears throat> um, kind of separated hatching lines over here. Scumbling here. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and try a different technique, um, maybe over on this side. If you just want to do blending, let's say with just pencil, so it's going to be just grayscale. We're going to just focus on pressure. So the amount of pressure, let's say I want this to be the darkest area, I'm going to press the hardest here, and I'm slowly going to start releasing the pressure, make it a little bit lighter as we go. And it doesn't always have to be an up and down stroke, you can still kind of incorporate some cross some cross hatching, but it's more like blended instead of lines. As long as you kind of maintain the same pressure, it'll be pretty even. Okay, so see I'm going all sorts of different directions up here, but it's all pretty even up here. Um, and then the spots that I want it to be darker, I'm pressing harder and blending it out. Okay, and then maybe on these front ones, I would some of those wrinkles again and just create some light 
values. Very light pressure. Okay, um, and this is pretty different right now, so I might even actually just go over all of this just very lightly. So it's not so different, not quite so dramatic. Okay, so we have a basic idea there. Um, if you have a blending tool, let me just show you kind of what one of those will look like. You can use that, but I'll show you another trick if you don't have one of these. So it's just something like this. This is a blending nub, that's what they call it. So you can just kind of blend everything in and it makes it a little smoother. Okay, so notice how it's starting to look a little flat now. So it's, it doesn't hurt to kind of go in the pencil and add highlights right so if you want to keep you can even do you know hatching and cross hatching so you might want to go in with your pencil and add just a few lines just to make it so it's not completely solid okay maybe on the tip here Okay, so just like that. If you do not have a blending nub, you can use a paper towel. You can use your finger, but um, it can cause the oils from your hands to ruin your paper. So let me just show you on here. It's basically the same, same result. Okay. Yeah, so don't be afraid to use your eraser as a tool as well. It can actually be really helpful for adding highlights. Um, going back and just if you overdo it on the, the values. Okay, so those are just a couple techniques there. Um, let's do stippling really quick. I'm going to go ahead and do it with um, Sharpie. You can do this with Sharpie, with pen. Um, just be careful not to like jam it onto the paper super hard because you'll ruin the tool that you're using. So you just want to be kind of gentle. So let's say I'm doing one of these back pedals. I would start very close together and you might want to overlap it. It's going to start kind of layering. So eventually you're seeing less white space because obviously you're <clears throat> putting the little dots so close together. Um, and then as they start to further out on the pedal away from the shadows you'll start to kind of spread them out a little more so one thing you want to avoid is doing a perfect pattern so don't just do rows of dots you want them to be pretty random So something kind of like that. Um, so that's stippling. We have cross hatching, hatching, blending, along with varied pressure. We have scumbling in the middle. Okay, so those are just a few examples of some techniques that you can use. Um, you can also do stippling with pencil, but it's just a little bit easier to do it with something like a marker um, or with a, like a felt tip. Okay, so I would suggest just practicing all these techniques on your own and then choosing, you know, which ones you think you want to apply to your own drawing.